Welcome to all, both here in person and those who are joining us online as we gather for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Our thanks to Sybil Dupuy, who is our guest organist this morning, and to David Hollis, who is our soloist. For those who are here in the sanctuary, fellowship pads are available to all and are especially useful in our effort to contact those who are visiting among us. For those who are participating in the service online, feel free to share any information that would be helpful for us to reach out and welcome you to our congregation. My thanks to the worship team which coordinates these services, and thanks to the musicians who offer such inspiration for our time together. Our liturgist this morning uh, is Patty Schultz. If you'd like to ask for a prayer request for these Sunday services, please call the church office at 207-646-4309, and we will include them in our weekly prayer concerns. Coffee with Friends will meet at the church parking lot tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. The worship team will meet tomorrow night via Zoom at 6 p.m., and there will be a special Zoom meeting of the Executive Council this coming Wednesday, September 15th at 7 p.m. I'm going to do something a little, uh, do something new this morning. Uh, as a way of reaching out to families and children among us, we will begin including a time in the worship service entitled, A Time for the Child in All of Us. This is a time designed especially for young people but it may also touch that inner child which all of us carry around with us every day. The church is lucky to have a beautiful wood cross hanging over the front of the church. Did you know that that cross was made by one of our church members? Do any of you know who that church member is? Bill Dickinson, yep, Bill Dickinson. And it's kind of uh, especially appropriate that we uh, recognize his work today because his birthday was this past Thursday on September 9th. Uh, his daughter Gail shared some information of how that cross was made. Uh, the church decided to have a cross at the center of the church. So Bill went to a lumber yard in North Berwick and got some four by fours where the lumber yard owner, Stan Thompson, donated the wood. Then Bill and a church member, Clifford Hilton, made the cross in Bill's basement. They screwed the cross in place on this wall as you see it this morning. And as Bill has said, it hasn't fallen down yet. <laughs> Why do you think we have a cross in front of the church? It's a reminder that Jesus wants us to give of ourselves for others, that we don't just do things for ourselves, but Jesus asks us to do things for others, for our family, for our friends, and even for strangers. So let's give thanks for this beautiful cross, and let's give thanks for the powerful message that the cross contains. Let us join together now in worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus asked the disciples, Who do people say I am? They answer, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say the prophets. But Jesus presses them. Who do you say I am? Peter answers, you are Christ, God's anointed one, God with us. Now Jesus pushes us. What about you? Here in this moment, in this community. Please join me, us in hymn number 123, Fairest Lord Jesus. Yeah. 
of God, you call us from the depths of our hearts, where we long for connection with you and with one another. You call us from busy streets and neighborhoods, where human pain and possibility are most urgent. You call us from our sacred stories, where God, Christ, Spirit create, challenge, comfort. Guide us, we pray on our adventure of hope and help us see with your eyes the ways which lead to the beloved community where Jesus Christ is at the center. Amen. As we share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks for all those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. The chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. It is a joy to wish Julie a happy birthday. May you have many blessings on your birthday and always. Prayers are as for Sandy, who has returned home from a hospital stay in California. Know that you are in our prayers from your main church uh, as we continue to keep you in our thoughts. Prayers for Nathan, Lane, Brody, and Calvin, local teenagers who continue to recover from injuries sustained in a car accident earlier this summer. Jim asks for continued prayers for his dear friend Kathy, who is recovering from surgery and receiving treatment. Ongoing prayers for Marriott, Johan, Mitch, Gloria, Katie, Debbie, Jean and Neil, Ruth, Anna, Catherine, Jenna Lee, Scott, Marilyn, and June. Prayers as well for Rick, Todd, Barbara, Peg, Nancy, Jean, David, Shannon, Harry, and Bill. And finally, we ask for prayers for Kevin, Bobby, John, Amy, Lee and Rita, Christine, Carol, Cindy, Larry, and Courtney. There are many in our circle of church family and friends who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones during these past several months. May they all be comforted in knowing that they are in our prayers. Every thought is a prayer and everyone is deeply appreciated. Let us join together now for our pastoral prayer. Ever present God, we gather before you on this day after 
the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on our nation. All these years later, we still feel the pain, the anger, the unspeakable horror of that day, and we come to you for comfort. We ask that you be with the families of those who were killed that day, that they might find healing for their grief. We pray for the first responders who ran towards the fire that day, both those who have passed and those who continue to suffer from debilitating effects of that day. We pray for our nation as we continue to struggle to learn the lessons from that day. And we pray for our world that nations and groups might turn away from violence and strive to find reconciliation and peace. We continue to pray for our nation and the world as we battle the Delta variant of COVID-19. Help us to rededicate ourselves to practices that will stem the tide of the infections and help us to have discerning hearts to determine your will in the midst of the decisions that we are called upon to make. We pray for those whose names we lift up in our joys and concerns, and we ask that you offer healing, comfort, strength, encouragement, and hope to all. And now as we offer these prayers before you, Lord, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. Let us pray. As we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The Congregational Church of Wells is profoundly grateful for the generous financial support of so many in the midst of these difficult times. We are thankful for your commitment to the ministries of this church, and we pray that we might continue to share the love of Christ with one another and the world around us as we open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit in our midst. For those who are worshiping here in the sanctuary, there are offering plates available on the table at the back of the church for any who would like to leave a pledge or a contribution. God. 
God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Yobia confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright. At last, be still, my soul. The waves and winds will know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still, my soul. The hour is nicening on. When we shall be forever with the Lord, whom disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow for not love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul. When change and tears are calling, all safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Thank you, David. Today's scripture is Mark 8 verses 27 through 38. Jesus and his disciples went to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what do you say, he asked? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed after three days and after three days rise again. He spoke he spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels.
Let us join together in prayer. God, we give thanks to you for your presence with us this morning as we reflect upon your word and your call to sacrifice. Be with us and help us to walk in the paths that you set before us, not just today, but each day in the week to come. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We have just heard one of the most important scriptures in the entire Bible, a real turning point in Jesus' ministry. Up until this moment, Jesus has been traveling throughout Galilee in the northern part of Israel, showing God's, God's remarkable power working through him as he performs miracles, healings, and displays astounding wisdom. Now Jesus calls his disciples away to a place that has had spiritual significance for people in the region for centuries, a place called Caesarea Philippi. The city, which was influenced by both Greece and Rome, was a location known for its devotion to Gentile gods. They stop at this location that is so rich in history, and Jesus takes the opportunity to stay, take stock. Who do people say that I am, he asks. Different Bible names emerge, maybe Elijah, maybe a resurrected John the Baptist, or maybe one of the other prophets. But then Jesus asked the disciples directly, but who do you say that I am? Peter, always the impetuous one, who was prone to speak first and think later, blurts out, you're the Messiah. But almost as soon as the words come out of his mouth, it's pretty clear that P Peter doesn't really realize what he is saying. He is looking for a glorious leader and hero who will free Israel for, from Roman domination. He is thinking in a way that the world around him is thinking. Jesus responds to these expectations by saying that the Messiah must suffer and die and on the third day be raised. Jesus' words don't fit into Peter's triumphant plans, so Peter rejects Jesus' words. Jesus, in turn, harshly confronts Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. Jesus was confronting Peter, Peter, telling Peter to resist the temptations of the world, which encourages us to avoid sacrifice. Instead, Jesus says that any who want to follow him must deny themselves, take up their cross, and walk in his paths. Jesus makes clear that he is not about glory or military or political power, but that he is about service, self-denial, and sacrifice. When Jesus tells us to take up our cross, he is not talking about unavoidable, unavoidable suffering, but he is calling us to intentionally make sacrifices for the sake of God and for the sake of one another. Who do you say that I am? There are many ways that we can answer that question. We can recite what we have learned. We can offer various creeds. We can cite teachings of church tradition over the centuries. But I believe that there is also a more personal way to answer Jesus' question. The times that we gain the truest sense of who Jesus is for us are those times when we need our faith the most when we feel most vulnerable, when we feel that we are at the end of our ropes, when we feel that we have nowhere else to turn. It is at those times that we realize that it is the stories about Jesus which help us to answer for ourselves Jesus' question, who do you say that I am? For as the retired pastor, Reverend Marin Tirabasi points out, stories, make sense out of life, give perspective to life, and open us to the divine. Take, for example, the story of the woman caught in adultery 
found in the Gospel of John, chapter 8. The woman is brought to Jesus by the scribes and the Pharisees, who are trying to sabotage his ministry and trying to trap him into doing something that would be counter to Jewish law. For the Jewish law demanded that a woman caught in adultery should be stoned to death. Jesus responds with quiet wisdom, strength, and courage in a way that silences his critics. He says, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Then Jesus turns to the woman and says, has anyone condemned you? No, no one, she responds. Then Jesus, with great compassion, replies, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I believe this story tells us that Jesus was a man who had the courage to stand up to others, a man who lived out of boundless love, and a man who believed in always giving others a second chance. Then there was a time when Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, turning the assumptions of the world upside down. Blessed are the poor, he says, those who mourn, the meek, those who are hunger, those who thirst for righteousness, the merciful, those who are pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Later in that same sermon, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Fundamentally, I believe this passage tells us that Jesus is the one who can help us to focus on what really matters in life. We get so caught up in the externals of life, food and clothing, houses and cars, and the trappings of life as we know them. But in the meantime, we lose sight of what really matters in life. Jesus is the one who reminds us of life's essentials, our relationship with God, our devotion to service, our calling to follow in the paths of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who will always help us to discover what truly has meaning in our lives. Then we come back full circle to Jesus' teaching in today's gospel. If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it. Jesus is the one who constantly challenges us, leading us forward, moving us towards a new way of life. Jesus is the one who expects us to be on a continuous journey of growth. He loves us and accepts us where we are in life, but he doesn't leave us there. Instead, he prods us forward, telling us parables, helping us to see things in new ways, constantly keeping our eyes clearly focused on God. In short, Jesus is the one who calls us to a lifelong journey of spiritual growth. John Newton wrote in his hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. Jesus, my savior, shepherd, friend, my prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. This is a hymn which helps us to answer Jesus' question. Who do you say that I am? And now let us ponder this challenge of Jesus this week. Who do we say Christ is in our lives, our community, our world? 
Let holy wisdom shine through all our ponderings and lead us to recognize and serve our risen Savior in all of our encounters. Amen. Thank you. 